everybody. Welcome to week three of History 102 Online edition. It's been a little while since I recorded a video for you guys, so I thought I would do that for this week. Um, we are continuing the theme from last week and reading about the French Revolution, specifically the aftermath of the revolution as it, um, well, it kind of evolves. Uh, we get we get we get the revolution in France. We remove King Louis the Sixteenth. Well, I mean, technically, his head is removed from the rest of him, um, and that is a marks kind of a, a turning point in in the revolution as becoming this kind of bloody, vengeful thing controlled by the radical Jacobins. Uh, the French would call them sort of the radical left in there in their political system at the time. And, um, and so we start to see the, the, the revolution evolve uh, both as kind of like a, a civil war of sorts and a, a foreign war as France fights off its enemies. The interesting thing about the readings for this week um, out of your textbook is, uh, let's see if it'll disappear on me. Yeah, <laughs> there it goes. Um, is, you know, we're looking at, <clears throat> uh, selections in the book that deal with the transition from a, a relatively like, I don't wanna say stable, uh, but like a Jacobin controlled revolutionary government to uh, something called the directory, which is like a committee, of, I think of like five people that, you know, elites that control the French Republic. And then we get Napoleon Bonaparte. So an evolution, in other words, from, in France, we get the monarchy, we have the monarchy, and then a revolution that overthrows the monarchy, and then we get uh, another authoritarian. Basically, we go from monarchy to republic to dictatorship, because Napoleon Bonaparte is a, uh, a rising star in the French military, even though he's kind of short, he's very... Um, uh, talented and charismatic and powerful and he ends up overthrowing the directory this kind of you know the last evolutionary form of republican government in france and then we get um napoleon who sets himself up to be uh first among equals um and then eventually the emperor of a new imperial france so have fun reading that it's a trip um we, and the whole time France is at war with external enemies and increasing in size, and it becomes a, a very panicky thing for the rest of Europe because honestly, Napoleon just keeps kicking the butts of any army and nation that comes up against him to try and, uh, you know, to overthrow him or to at least um, resist the onward march of French armies. Uh, France is a, is a superpower at this time. Uh, in the early 1800s. So have fun reading that. Um, and then we eventually get the fall of Napoleon and I don't want to spoil the story uh, too much, um, but uh, your readings in the textbook will go all the way up to the defeat of Napoleon. And, and, and then eventually we'll see a restoration of the monarchy in France. So it all comes back full circle after, you know, hundreds of thousands of people have died. So um, that will kind of wrap up our French revolutionary segment for the class. You will be reading in terms of your perspectives from the past book. I don't have the book around me right now, um, but you'll be reading a couple documents about this kind of Napoleonic era. Uh, one of them is um, Edmund Burke, the founder of conservatism. Basically, he's the, the, the granddaddy of the conservative ideology um, as, it, as it comes to be known politically, um, writing uh, sort of a, a critique of the French Revolution. And then um, Thomas Paine, you know, one of the great patriotic writers of the American Revolution, kind of responding to Burke and telling him why he's wrong. So you'll pay special attention to Burke in terms of his kind of attitude towards tradition and how tradition is being overthrown in France and how that's leading to chaos. Um, but also, you know, Thomas Paine has a different approach, obviously, to overthrowing a king. Uh, so it's kind of fun to read that back and forth or that, that call and response um, in that first document. 
It's like too many documents in one. Uh, and then you'll read a little bit about the Code of Napoleon, which is Napoleon's way of revamping the laws in France. And he has some things to say about um, specifically gender equality in post-revolutionary France. And that's kind of that's kind of interesting to see. So um, that's those are your readings for for this week. I've got kind of a glare going on right here. And my hair looks like it's on fire <laughs> or glowing very angelic. Uh, if you have any questions about anything, let me know. You'll be tasked with doing a quiz on Canvas. This is a quiz week. It's a relatively calm week for you here in week three after uh, uh, perhaps a tumultuous, you know, writing the first essay assignment, first analysis paper uh, in, in week two, module two. Um, I will be grading those gradually over the course of this week. It's gonna take me a while to get through all of them. So please be patient. I'm hoping by the end of this weekend in week three to have them all graded. And comments too for you To Don't forget to read the comments that I post um, in Canvas. Cause if you, know, if you need anything to be adjusted in writing these essays, I'd rather see you you know, take my advice sooner uh, rather than later on in the semester um, to, to kind of correct for citations or, you know, tackling the questions in a certain way or whatever. But so so pay attention to my feedback, in other words, um, to do an even better job for the second paper, which will be for uh, coming in, in week four, module four. All right, let me know if you have any questions in the meantime. In other words, um, adios and have a good week reading about Napoleon. <laughs>